American A-10 Warthog attack planes arrived in the Middle East on Thursday as the Pentagon scrambles to keep the nascent war between Israel and Hamas from sparking a broader regional conflict. It was the 354th Fighter Squadron from Davis Monthan deployed as part of a larger effort to rush firepower to U.S. CENTCOM. More advanced military aircraft, including the F-35 Lightning II, the F-15 Eagle, and the F-16 Fighting Falcon. Yes. Why does the... Oh, hold on now. Why does the <laughs> A-10 get to be the Warthog and the F-16's got to be the Fighting Falcon? It's not the Thunderbird II. Oh. <laughs> I just, you know, I wanted to highlight that for you, Mother. <laughs> Thunderbolt. Um, let's see. F-15's from 40, 494th Expeditionary Fighter Squadron. 50 at years old. RF Lake and Heath that arrived on theater on Friday. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall noted in Atlantic Council event Tuesday that airmen who are due to return to the United States from CENTCOM will stay in the area. So they got extended too. And that pretty much covers it. DOD policy not to discuss future operations. Yep. Yeah. So we talked about this a little bit with Shanghai about how useful this is. But T-Bear, the more things change, the more they stay the same, right? We were talking about you know, what's the next conflict? And we saw Ukraine and, you know, they lined up all the tanks and they said, hey, the A-10 would be great here. And then we said, no, they're not because of the the seed and the, the surface to air picture. And now we're back in the Middle East. And guess what airplane is good for this? Yep. And, you know, the Ukraine, I don't know if I if I 100 percent agree on that, because if we were fighting that war, yeah, we couldn't have gave them to the Ukrainians to go fight that war. But if the U.S. was fighting that war, uh, that missile threat, that IADS would probably not be as robust as it was. And the A-10 could go in there. I mean, we're not a we're not a doorbuster, door kicker kind of airplane. We're the one comes in after and takes care of things there. But um, yeah, Middle East. I mean, and particularly what you're talking about there, uh, the A-10 ended up over time becoming a, a urban fighter, and uh, it would definitely, you know, all the collateral damage, uh, uh, prevention things that they did with both, you know, uh, smaller warheads, uh, more precise things and, and, uh, kinetic weapons. Yeah, that would be, uh, that would be a pretty good place for them. Probably. I'm curious where they are, but I know we're not going to talk about that, but I'm curious where they, where they flying them out of. Yeah, I, I don't know, but uh, if they're even flying them out of anywhere, right? I mean, right now they're just, it's just like the carrier to show a force. Yep. We're here. We're ready. You know, those guys, because some of those, the younger guys especially, missed the tail end and the ISIS fight. So they're at the front end and they probably thought that, oh, well, this thing's going away. I'm not going to get to see anything. And now they're probably chomping at the bit going, put yep. me in. Let's go do some work. Bulldogs. That's who that is. Bulldogs out of DM. Yeah. Gaki, what do you think, man? Yeah, I just, <clears throat> I think the A-10 always has a place in uh, in warfare. I mean, I like it. So like a side note, and I know there's sophisticated aircraft were also in the area, but like, it's like the, the A-10 was, is the, is the, uh, you know, the main, you know, the main headline. Cause it is right. I mean, it, like, <clears throat> after day one, like T Bear said, you need an airplane that can go in there and just clean house. You know, after after the expensive, stealthy, you know, nerd stuff takes care of that, takes care of, you know, your air defenses from the bad guys. Nothing's gonna do it better than A ten. But people misunderstand the A ten is not the A ten that T Bear flew in the eighties. It's it's a nerd airplane now too. Yeah. They've got all the cool toys. <laughs> Hey, I, I, I flew them in this century. <laughs> <laughs> Count it. It's a hand prop it. Yeah. But, I had a little yeah. wheel. You spun the gun yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I but, um, I did always have an INS at least. <laughs> oh, T-Bear, do you think in, the, in this conflict or any conflict, do you think what Gonky's point about being a specialized what's your what's your take on multi-role since you've done both in the f-16 and the a-10 it was it better as a multi-role fighter a jack of all trades or do you think part of what makes the a-10 great is that the community is focused on basically one one to two missions yeah 
Absolutely. When I, I flew the F-16, I always said, man, we're, you know, I'm half ass at everything. <laughs> what I was saying. Because <laughs> as soon as you got spun up on, you know, BFM and, and air to air, you go back to air to ground, you couldn't hit the, you, know, you couldn't hit your butt with both hands. And then you get to where you're driving, driving nails with your bombs. And then you go back to flying BFM and you, you know, you can't even, you can't even fight. So, uh, and then the F-16 guys hated it when I said that, the straight F-16 guys. But that's because I had come from the A-10 community where our only mission was the 18-year-old on the ground. That was it. And uh, A-10 pilots pride themselves on being cast pilots. I mean, the two things we do, well, three things, the two big things we do is close air support and combat search and rescue. And uh, that is the, I mean, that is in the blood of every A-10 pilot. And, er, and when you're spending almost 100% of your time training to those two missions, oh, the other one I didn't mention, mention was AFAC, uh, you know, FAC A. So um, mm -hmm. you, you do also do that, but that and CAS are pretty dang close. So uh, when you are training to just those things, you are the CAS and CSAR experts. Uh, I don't think a Viper guy can ever claim to be a CAS expert. So, yeah, when you're uh, when you're fighting in a uh, when you're fighting in a, a urban area like that, you got the A10 like we were talking about the collateral damage. I mean, the gun, the gun is like one of the best anti-collateral damage weapons. I mean, you you shoot just what you want to shoot about something about the size of a car, and that's it. Even if yeah. you could focus a hundred percent of your time like doing cast in the F-16. I mean, the A-10 was just a better airplane for the mission. Was Is that a true turn, statement? Turn back around, yeah. Um. Yeah, well, for a couple of reasons. <clears throat> One, loiter time, because, you. I mean, you can hang out in the long. I mean, we were doing in Afghanistan four hours unrefueled in the A-10. And, you know, you just had it back on the, back on the blades up high. Um, the other thing is just the bomb range, if you're dropping bombs, and say you're in a, a low altitude kind of, well, that's a whole nother thing. If the weather gets bad, vipers are fast. You get down below the weather, you're having to get so far away from the target area, you just don't see. An A-10, slower, under the weather is more effective there. Um, once you go to low threat and everybody's flying up high, it's not as much of a, uh, much of a difference. But then it all falls on to how much the A-10's carrying to the fight compared to a Viper. Cause I mean, you load a hog up and uh, you can be there all day with, with bombs and bullets and gas. T-Bear, what do you think about the argument of two seat FAC A versus like an A-10 single seat FAC A work? Huh. You know, i am always been a single seat guy. I, uh, I think my SA is reduced when I have a guy in the back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well mainly because you know when you're doing it all yourself you have to focus and you have to bring it all in and you're you're trying to have the whole picture if you're up front only doing half the job maybe you don't get i don't know i don't have the experience of doing that with two people in an airplane uh i do know as a, a single seat airplane it's busy uh but you know we've done a lot of fact in single seat airplanes, you know, all the way back Vietnam, all those FAC airplanes were mostly single seat, uh, except when they put like a Vietnamese translator in the back, you know, but you think of your O1s, your O2s, your OB10s, you know, your, uh, your Misty FACs, that was all uh, single seat. And then now we did it with uh, A10s and, you know, we did OA37s and then A10s and uh, it's all been single seat. I think the the Navy puts a, they fly a two seater when they do FAC A. Marines. Right? Yeah, the Marines, Marine. right? That's the, and the Navy. Marine. The Navy does and, FAC A with the Air. And the Air, Air Force, the, aren't the Strike Eagle? Don't the Strike Eagle community or something? Don't they do? Do they do FAC A? I didn't know they had a FAC A mission. Uh, I don't know. I didn't, they're all weird. Um, <laughs> Gawkey, yeah, you look like you're going to say something. has FAC A mission, but they do it single seat also. T Bear, has yeah. an A10 got a autopilot? It does. Okay. Yeah. I know, I know that used to help me out a lot in cast. Yeah. The A10 has yeah. all the And, and <laughs> I would venture to say, you know, back to that less sophisticated or the other more sophisticated aircraft, 
you know, a C model A10, other than not having a radar, is a pretty sophisticated airplane. Yeah. You know, yeah. the data link, the data link targeting pods. I mean, it, it's a pretty sophisticated aircraft. Helmet too, right? You guys, the latest helmet. Is helmet. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, that's awesome. 